we are going to use Microsoft Word in order to create an outline. Now, an outline is a wonderful resource to use at any stage of the writing process. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I start drafting my paragraphs, I lose track of where I am. Each of the paragraphs, if I'm just free writing and writing along, writing along, sometimes I have a problem seeing the structure of what I'm trying to communicate to my audience. And so in one paragraph, I might have two different topics going on. And when I'm really struggling with finding, okay, what, what order does all this information need to be in? Sometimes breaking those blobs of paragraphs into an outline helps me see the structure more effectively. So I'm hoping that this tutorial will be one that you come back to regularly so that you can learn how to organize material, structure material, or maybe just gain perspective on what your entire project is. Students will find the tutorial in the resources folder in Blackboard. And there's a computer tutorial. You'll see that we're on page 10. Several pages after this, we have some sample outlines that you can use for your paper. Just to give you a model, do not use the exact same structure because you might need an A and a B and a C, whereas in my outline I might have all the way through section D and I might have ones and twos at one level, but I might not have them at another. Don't use it exactly letter for letter and number for number the same as I do. Make sure that you look at the rules, look at the guidelines set in there, but make the outline your own. There are no hard, fast rules on you must always have an A, B, and a C in this section. But there are some other guidelines that you need to follow for an outline. A couple of the buttons that I want you to get used to using are located at the top of the page. And I'm demonstrating here in this screen capture, but I'm going to click up to the Home tab so that you can see about where I'm pointing here in this document. You have the numbering button, which is located right here or actually in Word, it's located right here. Notice that it has a 1, 2, and a 3, whereas there's also a button called a multi-level list. I do not want you to get to know this button for our course. Experiment with it another time, but if you use this multi-level list, Word is going to squish certain sections of the outline down to places that you don't want it to appear. So it's just going to be a lot easier if you use the regular numbering library in order to help you through this tutorial. So know this one button. Do not use this button. Let me put a big X on that, right? <laughs> the other two buttons that I want you to get to know are called the decrease indent and increase indent buttons. And those are just two and three buttons over from the numbering list that I want you to use. The increase indent and decrease indent buttons work better than the tab. Do not use the tab button on your keyboard when you are completing an outline. Use the increase and decrease indent buttons. It's going to help Word understand, oh, Joan must just want a number one right here every time. So if you use the increase and decrease indent, it understands that concept. And then you'll find that the same structure appears throughout the outline consistently. If you use the tab, there's something in Word that doesn't communicate that very well. And what you'll find is that you have bigger headaches and more headbang against your computer than you actually get written in the outline itself. I have scrolled down in the tutorial. And what I wanted to do before we actually get to creating the outline itself or building the spots for the outline and seeing how those buttons work together, I wanted to actually show you the structure of an outline. Notice the levels. We start out with a Roman numeral level. You'll notice as we scroll down just a little bit, you'll see another Roman numeral. That's the capital II. Those spots are reserved for the main points or the primary points of the paper. So number one, spot number one, is always the thesis statement. And the final spot in the paper that is a Roman numeral, is also the thesis statement for the conclusion. What are the twos, threes, fours, and anything in between? Those would be the topic sentence levels. So the main point goes at the highest or the level that is farthest to the left. It's always going to be a Roman numeral, and it's always going to be either a thesis statement or a topic sentence. In longer papers, so in 20 or um, 30 page papers, you will have maybe a section heading sentence, 
So you might have one section or one topic that runs on for three or four paragraphs. You would have that topic sentence for that section represented here. And at that point, these A's and B's will take on the leading sentence in those paragraphs role. For our purposes, all of our paragraphs for our papers are, are going to be represented or broken by a Roman numeral. And then the main points in the paragraph will be represented by the capital letter level. So what is our second level? We change from a number into a letter. And those capital letters represent the main points of that paragraph. What are the primary things that you need to discuss through that paragraph? They're at the A, B, and C level. The next level would be a number one level. At that level, you're probably giving a little more elaboration, a little more description. The next level is a little letter level. Say that three times fast. <laughs> this is where you get examples that you can you can offer. Maybe it's the development of a story. Maybe it's something that's just a little, little bit more descriptive. And then there is a final level, and kind of a final level, actually. There are deeper levels, but for our purposes, you're not going to go any further than this level. Um, there's a little Roman numeral level. That's what this level is. Um, it's a lowercase i. So what you've seen is the development. It goes from a number level to a letter, to a number, to a letter, to another number. As you go through the paper, those are the levels that you're going to make sure that you keep in your head. So if you can keep, keep those ideas together, thesis and topic sentence will always be at the Roman numeral level. The main points of the paragraph will always be at the capital letter level. And then the support and elaboration for the paragraph will happen at the Arabic number level, the lowercase letter level, and finally the smaller Roman numeral level. Now that you have seen the numbers and letter structure and what they represent in the outline, let's actually construct it. So we're going to start out by going up to the numbered list, and we're going to click the little arrow that's a drop-down menu to the right of it. We're going to look for our Roman numerals. There we go. There's our capital letter I, or number one. And remember, this is where the thesis statement is offered. Okay. Now, how do we get to the next level? Press the Enter key. What do you notice about this level? Let me scroll it up a little bit here. You'll notice that it's repeated the Roman numeral level. And we know that the Roman numeral level comes at the topic sentence. We have several more sentences to get in here between now and then, don't we? <laughs> so we want to push this in and create a what? A capital A. If I were to switch it to a capital A now, look what happens. In my list, I've just clicked on the A, and it erases the Roman numerals and changes it to a capital letter. I don't want that. I have to do something first. I have to use that increase indent button that I showed you on the screen capture and that you'll again find in the tutorial on the outlining. I want to use the increase indent button to get this next level to move in. And darn it, why doesn't Word just go on ahead and put in the numbers and letters that I want? Well, because it doesn't think like me. I have to tell it. I have to boss it around and tell it what I want. So I'm going to go back up to the numbered list and I'm going to grab a capital A, and now I have one of my main points. Well, here in the introduction, that is likely going to be a lead-in statement or an attention grabber. It's not necessarily going to be a main supporting point of the paper. I can enter down. It's now understands, oh, so you want a capital letter here, so we have a capital B. So now I want to put in another point. Maybe I want to put in an essay map. Maybe I want to put in a couple of other supportive points. So maybe I want a one here. And what do I have to do if I go here and click the one? Then it's going to change all my numbers and letters. I need to first increase my indent so that I get it, get it indented a little bit there. And then I can change to my number one, two, three. I do not care which Arabic numeral you use, honestly. One, two, three with a period or one, two, three with a parenthesis, I don't care. It's up to you. And most, most of your instructors are not going to care either. So this is where some of the description and other details are offered at this level. 
What if I wanted this to be a C and I wanted to wrap up? That's where my decrease indent button comes in. So watch what happens when I click decrease indent. It moved back my three one level and turned it back into the capital letters. See, once you tell Word what to do, it understands what it needs to do. And it uh, will, will obey what you've told it to do by using those increase indents and the enters properly. So here we could wrap up the introduction. Now we can enter down. At this stage, we have a capital D still. I want a Roman numeral 2 so that I can start my first body paragraph. So I just need to go up to the decrease indent level and hit decrease indent. It remembered I needed a Roman numeral there, and I can begin writing the topic sentence. So I've entered down. I've created a 3. I can continue, and here's the main point that supports number 2. I can put that in there, and then I can say, OK, what are my primary examples that I can use in order to support this one main point? So here's the point where I describe a few rules to you. First, you'll notice that I'm using complete sentences at the Roman numeral and the capital letter level. Let me also guide you to use complete sentences at the number 1 or Arabic numeral level, too. So let me change this, this fragment, this command, into a complete statement. So I've also offered you a second number here. Let me offer you another rule. I'm going to indent and then choose my lowercase letter to illustrate this point. Here at the little a, b, and c level, I have given you one more rule. Every number one must have a two. So every one must also have a two. That's a basic in logic. You state something, you don't just leave it alone, right? You elaborate upon the point. So every point needs some further elaboration or exemplification. This rule is not just true for every 1 and 2. It's also true for every A and every B. Every A must have a B. Of course you can go beyond that. You could put a 3 in here or a 4 or a 5. The minimum would be 2. Let me give you one more rule. For each sentence, or each letter level number, only one sentence is allowed. The reason for this is so that we can see how thorough the development is. These ones support the Bs. So if we look in our previous example, we can see that A doesn't just have a 1 and a 2, but it has further development here. If we had all of these up at one sentence level, would we really see how much development we have in the, in the paragraph? The answer is no. So by pulling everything into a separate line, we can see, okay, I make one point, two points, three points here. So in B, is having two points going to be enough? Or should I have a third or a fourth point too? You can see it a little bit easier. As, as you're developing the paper. In the paper, the last Roman numeral that the writer's going to offer is going to be the conclusion paragraph. So just to reiterate what I said at the very beginning of um, explaining the major sections and the major levels of the outline, uh, the Roman numeral for the last paragraph is going to be the thesis statement. So even the conclusion paragraph needs to have its thesis statement separated out there. The thing that's different about the conclusion is that idea of, hey, you're finished. You know, the A's, the B's, the 1's, the 2's, the 3's are all going to have a notion of wrapping up the paper. You know, think of those good conclusion tips and ideas. You know, what must the audience know about the topic before they finish the paper officially? What are the things, what are the calls to action that you might want to instill in the audience? That's what you offer in that conclusion paragraph. And again, there's no right or wrong to the numbering and lettering levels. Just remembering what levels you need, full sentences, and what levels 
um, you need to have you know support and just just design it as as you go. So this concludes our presentation on how to outline. If you run into any blocks along the way, just email me. Um, send your file and describe in your message where you're having problems. I hope I can help you fix it. I can look at the codes and kind of give you a little bit of guidance if you're able to send that to me.